Hello and welcome to March West Junction TMD. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're just going to have a little look at the town scene of the layout. And I'm just going to show you some of the uh, details that I've got on there. That I've purchased at bargain prices because I've gone out and bought second hand or sale stuff. So uh, I'd just like to share with you all the different things that I've added to the layout that uh, doesn't need, really need to break the bank. So uh, grab yourself a cup of tea and uh, enjoy. Okay, starting at the top end of the layout where there's a level crossing going across onto uh, into the town. Uh, we've got this sort of little diorama scene here where there's a little bit of roadworks. Now, uh, these roadwork signs come with a few of the figures and uh, obviously this little barrier thing. There was a wheelbarrow and a few of the workmen. Shovels, picks, things like that and a broom. And uh, I picked them up second hand from a, a toy fair uh, probably I think they're about four pounds something where normally I think they're over 10 11 pounds now the signs weren't brilliant because for some unknown reason when Backman done them it showed that the uh, actual roadworks were on this side of the road because it got the deviation on that little sign there differently uh, so what I did I went on the internet and just printed me a load more signs off and glued them over these signs just to replace them. Same with this sign here is off the internet. The level crossing a second and this is Pico. The, the actual lights, the imitation lights are from Hornby. Again, second hand I've bought them and uh, the signage on them I've just printed off the internet. There's little drains here. The drains are... Uh, free with some of the magazines that you buy uh the lot like said about the figures the wheelbarrow that's from knock now i bought them off the internet uh second hand sale uh again they were a lot cheaper half the price same with the flowers and these flowers and these here and the walling it's all off the internet second hand this building was free with railway modeler uh the lorry here uh, was from uh, a, a toy fair and I think I picked up for six quid and I've uh, sort of weathered it slightly and give it a matte finish to show it's worn. Uh, the trees are from the tree shop but they're, they're clearance trees. Okay, they're not brilliant but I think they're a good representation of the trees. The road markings uh, that you see here are continental markings and they're from uh, Bosch and uh, this is the pack I use they're actually rub on markings and uh, I think they're really good I, I think I'm quite impressed with them so uh, uh, and they've lasted since I've uh, started building the layout which is uh, coming up to four years so I'm quite impressed with those Okay, I've took you off the tripod so it'll be a little bit wobbly. Uh, these trees at the back are the Gage Master trees. And let me pan round slowly so you don't make you sick, but I've got them down that end as well. And uh, with those, they were, uh, I think I paid seven quid 
for a pack and I think there's about 40 trees in there. The, uh, it's a game from Toy Fairs or uh, Flea Bay. Uh, same with the fencing, it's Pico fencing. Some knock figures, uh, there's a little uh, bird on a pedestal there as well. All these sort of stuff I just pick up second hand. Even the back scene is, uh, I think it's a Gage Master one, is second hand that you pick up from Toy Fairs. That sign there, the advertising sign, that was free in a magazine. Uh, same with some of these signs. These lampposts, I uh, purchased them when uh, Ian Allen was closing down and they were selling them off quite cheap. The buildings at the back, I've bought them from a, a model shop that I use called uh, A Oaks. It's a, a clothing shop for school wear and things like that. And uh, the buildings I get from him when he has his sales on in January. And uh, they, he knocks them out for over 50% off. Uh, in the actual skip there, it's a scale model scenery kit with the scaffolding as well. Uh, all the little bits I've kept from other kits and leftovers, apart from the washing machine and the uh, bench. Uh, sorry, not the bench, the uh, seat that's in there. Uh, again, they're 3D printed stuff that you get offline and they're a couple of quid. And uh, I find that, you know, it's not worth printing them yourself. You only want a couple. The road markings, again, as you can see, go all the way down the road. The double yellow lines are from Scale Model Scenery and they're not mega expensive. They're not bargain items, but uh, they're within the price range of the modeler. And uh, the bus stop there, that was again a, an eBay buy. Same as the station building. And what I do to enhance it, I put these little bins, which are from a 3D printed company. Uh, there's some uh, benches that I've added and uh, a phone box there. Little birds on the roofs. All this I just purchased uh, second hand or in a sale. And then I add my own details to them, like adding the bin on, things like that, adding the uh, access ramps on. And uh, the signage is free from magazines or off the internet. And I, do, I add these little details to my bridges and things like that. So you've got one of them bins there. And as you can see, I've added signage to this as well. This parcel point. Now this I picked up for £10, but I think you still get them for about £20 uh, cheap. You know, brand new, they're a bit more expensive. I think they've just re-released this. The fencing second hand, and you just clean it up and paint it off someone else's layout. And same with the parts that go inside those uh, brute trolleys. My brute trolleys I bought second hand as well. The majority of the stuff I buy is second hand or in the sale. What I try to do as well is I group all my figures together. So all the figures that are on that far platform there, which is platforms one and two, are HO, or there might be the odd one that's uh, double O. And then on this near platform here, which is platform three, uh, they're uh, all from Backman, apart from the odd 3D printed one there with the uh, Doctor Who. But uh, I've tried to segregate them so they the same scales with the same scale so it don't stand out as you can see i've got a lot of brute trolleys because i bought a job lot off someone i mean there's some more down there and i think i've got some in my boxes as well yeah there's some more down there <coughs> my signal box detail it was bought uh it's the metcalf range and it was bought uh, from a toy fair where a guy was closing down what he was selling and he was selling all the stuff off cheap as I showed you in the previous video, these are lollipop sticks uh, to, to make the actual crossing. And as you can see, there's cable trunk in there, which I've uh, purchased second hand. These signals I bought from the Dapol shop and they were £2.50 each because they're seconds and uh, they're not supposed to work. But as you can see, they're all lit up and they do work, which I was surprised about. And all the flowers and things like that, again, and the trees are all second hand. It's the only way that I feel that I can afford to buy a lot of the stuff. 
there's little point motors there or imitation point motors and ground signals and uh, as you can see there's a cabling at the back now this is a brilliant little kit from scar model scenery that holds the cabling and i've just bought some wire and run it through and it goes all the way down to simulate the cable trunking so it's like uh, all gathered together and then it runs across to there across into the cable trunking and then over into the signal box some of this fencing second hand and the buildings and that i do buy some new stuff that was a free kit uh, going with railway modeler that was from my uh, shop oaksies the same as the signal box tunnel portals and the church and then obviously we've got this little gang down here i mean that was full price from scar model scenery nice little kit they've gone up in price now but they were really cheap years ago they used to be about four quid and uh signage as well here is uh what i've got uh, off the internet and printed it off that was sec uh, the digger was second hand the excavator was second hand off uh ebay or something like that same as the workers and obviously that little uh i think they're called unimob they were uh with a magazine series but if you go to hattons they're selling bits of bobs like that off really cheap and uh that were in those series i don't think they've got the unimob but they've got diggers and things like that as well other track uh, maintenance vehicles the actual netting is uh, fishing netting that I've painted blue. I did originally paint it orange and then there was pointed out that that's uh, not used on the railway, it's blue, so I've changed it to blue. So there you go, that's an overview of some of the uh, details I've added that were quite cheap uh, on the layout. It's just looking at internet, looking at second hands, going to toy fairs and even ebay ebay can be a bit pricey at some start times and other times it's not so it's worth persevering and having a look what i'd like to do now is take you over to the workbench and show you my collection of spares and things like that that i keep uh, as they always say modeling never been anything so we'll move over to that next Okay, we're over at the workbench and uh, I just thought I'd show you some of the things I have for uh, my model railway to help me keep it running and uh, what I do to keep things segregated so I know where everything is. So we'll move over to the right to start off with and this is my uh, junk box of plastic. Everything from aeroplane bits, train kits, things like that. These, uh, the beds off Airfix uh, low mat wagons, the seconds, as you can see, uh, they're not mouldy properly. And they have these in the shop and they just ask for a donation and you just take as many as you want. I've spoke about it before. I've actually made wagons up from uh, these uh, incorrect mouldy products and uh, they do come in handy. Uh, I mean, as you can see, there's decking and all that. You could make something out of that if, uh, on the back of a lorry or something like that. So I always keep everything, all the spare wheels off an Airfix kit, fencing, all the sprues and things like that. It's the same with the cardboard. With your cardboard kits, I keep all this because it's got brick effects, uh, tarmac effects, and then these I use for supports when I'm making model kits. So inside the buildings, I can glue these in to keep everything square, nice and square in the corner of the buildings. So I'll keep a box of all that sort of stuff. And then this is all your laser cut uh, off cuts and lollipop sticks that I have and uh, things like that, coffee stirrers. 
uh, scale model scenery jig. I even keep them. But I cut all the little bits off as well and then use them in like scrap bins and things like that on the layout. These are some of the tools. This is one of my toolboxes. This was a champagne set that we have at Christmas. And uh, I keep all my uh, pens, pencils and glues and things like that in this one. And then moving down, this is my tin of paintbrushes. These are the better quality paintbrushes that I have. And again, I've purchased a lot of these from uh, sales and things like closing down. So I think Models Own, I bought a load of stuff off uh, when that was closing down many years ago. This is that uh, rub on road markings again that I was on about earlier. This is a good little tool. Uh, it's a magnetizer and demagnetizer from uh, Eclipse. Uh, I bought this from RS, I think probably about 2 95 and they're brilliant for when you want to pick up a little bit of a screw or something out of a, a loco and uh, or drop it back in and you can't hold it and you can't get your fingers because I've got chunky fingers, it's awkward to get in. So you can magnetise the end of your screwdriver to pick the screw up and pop it into place and then the top part, you run it through there and it demagnetises it. So uh, that's a good little uh, tool to have and it's not expensive. Obviously, I've got some little clamps there that I've bought from the pound shop. This uh, screwdriver set was from uh, an Aldi set, which is really cracky little set. Covers everything. I've never found a screw or a, a, a bolt at the moment in model form that I can't get out because of, uh, I've got this kit. And this is this one I use for my paints. Again, it was one of these champagne gift sets you have at Christmas. And the Frere Rocher segregators in the bottom a lot of these paints i've bought from uh, model zone when it was closing down something that's handy to have as well is these little spoons that you get from uh, some of these uh, cafeterias uh, when you have the spoons clean them afterwards and keep them i know they're only wood but they're better than a, a metal one and when you're doing ballasting and tapping the track they don't mark the track i've noticed with a metal spoon and you tap the track to get the ballast to sit level uh, it always uh, damages the top edge of the track. You can see a little bruise mark. With the wooden one, it does the same effect, but uh, don't seem to uh, damage the track because obviously it's softer than wood. Then I've got these storage tubs here, and I always label everything up. These are some of the halogen parts. This is a mix of parts from uh, Voitrains and uh, Dapol, a bit of Hornby stuff. And I always keep them segregated or bagged up. Then we move on to a bit of Backman stuff that I've got spares. And uh, these are a mixture of uh, different kits, you know, Hornby and things like that, that got left over. Uh, what I do, if I go to a show and I see them selling stuff off cheap, spares, I always purchase them because either I need them or someone in the club will need them. So it's always worth buying these little bits even though you think you don't need them but later on you might need them if you buy a, mod a second hand model like I do and something's missing like a pantograph off a of class 92 I've got some spare pantographs there and things like that and I've got eight of these at the moment these are off cuts of uh, Oxford stuff bit of electrical stuff weights to go into my uh, wagons fish plates stuff like that, screws as well I always keep the small screws that you get when I'm pinning stuff. And I always, I'm always constantly buying these couplings and things like that so I don't lose out. Because now these are getting a bit expensive. So if you see them in these little bags where someone's selling them, uh, it's worth buying. Same with the wheels. I've got loads of wheels at the moment. It's because someone was selling them off cheap, so I thought I'd buy them. And this one, I've got figures. A lot of these figures are out of calendars or I remember I bought, if you watched my previous video, I bought a big set of figures for a tenner from the Woolly uh, Model Club Open Day. And uh, there was animals and things like that. I've got loads and loads more in another tray uh, under the workbench. In there, I keep all my bits and bobs of ladders and things like that. Grey stones and stuff like that. Bins, security cameras and things, bikes. All these I've been buying over the years, you know, cheap. What's been left over from other things. So it's always worth keeping. Just to uh, put you in the picture with like, it's worth buying stuff when you see them. These are what go with your uh, class 
Uh, I think it's called 22221 Backman Voyagers. And I picked them up for two quid the other week at the uh, Warsaw Wood Toy Fair. And I was kicking myself because he had another pack and I thought, no, I'll just get the one. But I know in the club when we're setting up the Virgin Voyager for the open day, we kept losing one of the couplings. So it's worth uh, buying stuff like that when you see them because if you buy them direct from Backman, they're very expensive. Something else I do as well, I go on the internet and print signs off and uh, glue these to the layout. Uh, onto a little plastic sprues, you know, the sprues that I was on about earlier. So uh, this pack of signs here, this was uh, from Chanwell, the brilliant channel, check it out, Michael at Chanwell. Now, I've got his permission to uh, use these and uh, I've fitted them, uh, well, glued them into place onto one of my buildings as an advertisement for the wear. These are out of magazines, so you get these for free. And if you want these to go a bit further, just photocopy them. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, you're not going to sell them on, so there's no copyright. And they're only going on your layout, and it's fine to use that. Same again, these are out of magazines. This was something West Hill Wagon Works did on Facebook, where they did a load of signs for everyone. And you just had to download it and print it off. So I've done that as well. And again, with all these... They're all from uh, different kits uh, that you get free with magazines. And I have them for the brick texture and there's all signs. I mean, there's this one, BRM, and it was scale model scenery. And I use them, the signage and things like that for when I was working on the, uh, on the scale model scenery building on the depot side of the layout. So it's worth keeping hold of all these old magazines and things like that, they used to get free. I mean, there's a station building there, which I built on a previous layout for my dad years ago. And that was quite good. So uh, there's another tip for you, just to uh, keep your eye out on the magazines when they've got free, free stuff to give away. Uh, I mean, I've had Metcalf kits and everything in the past and uh, used them for the layout. And uh, it comes in handy, like, if you want to uh, just add that little bit of detail at low cost. And like I say, the internet's a wonderful place for uh, sourcing all this uh, printed literature so you can use it on your layout. Okay, that brings me to the end of this video. It was just so I could share with you how I can afford to uh, model and do what I do and uh, give you an overview of what's on the layout and uh, what's cheap out there. And it doesn't have to be an expensive hobby. If you uh, look round and persevere with uh, different things that are out there in toy fairs, Flea Bay, Facebook as well. You can get some good stuff off Facebook. And uh, just keep your eyes peeled when you're at these shows. Especially these shows with, where they've got a tub. And it's all bagged up with like a pound or four pound on it. It's worth spending that ten minutes and just have a really good rummage. Because you can pick yourself up some uh, cracking stuff. Like a lot of the fallow figures. I mean, some of my uh, fallow figures... And my knock figures have come from uh, advent calendars that I've had for Christmas. And you get like 24 figures and they end up being like less than a pound each if you uh, buy them at the right time. So uh, thank you for stopping by. I, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, if you have, please like and share. Please comment below if you've got any suggestions or ideas uh, of where you can get stuff to make this uh, hobby affordable because I'd appreciate as much information back as well. So uh, it helps me to progress with my layout. And uh, stay safe, and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.